I am Agent Hugh Manning, and I am taking dictation at the behest of Director Zimbabwe Klein. We lost two agents investigating this case, so it was said that the Bureau was in need of a more senior investigator. In the event of my death, it is our hope that this dictation can be retrieved and used to train future recruits. May 13th, 7.05 p.m. Operation Oakenwood. Found cabin missing girl was taken and dismembered. Local authorities only found a heart and a torso with one hand fingernails painted on index finger, middle finger, and pinky. Ring and thumb were untouched. Last agent sent in half field report of mannequin placed on the scene. Previous agent Dunleavy took picture of said mannequin in question. May 14th. 1226 p.m. Operation Oakenwood matched the face of said mannequin to a popular department store. Same model and make, painted by artist Enzo Ferreri in 1952. Ties to the occult? Uncertain. Have managed to secure requests to inspect the store after hours. Most supernatural occurrences happen in nighttime hours between 12 a.m. and 3.33 a.m. May 14th. 5.36 p.m. Operation Oakenwood. Cassette tape of 1984's new edition's popular hit, Mr. Telephone Man, broke in my tape player. No signs of psychic interference. May 14th, 1.36 a.m. Operation Oakenwood. Find singular note on marble floor, just out of lingerie department. Note reads, we are sorry, we had nothing to do with it. May 14th, 1.38 a.m. Operation Oakenwood. Inside the security booth with one Mr. Stanley Dupley, night watchman, asked to review tapes. We find that at 1.35 a.m. power surge occurs and note is mysteriously left on ground. I asked Mr. Dupley the frequency at which these surges happened. He explained that it was frequent. It was his belief and I quote, these motherfuckers are cheap ass bastards and do not fix shit around here. End quote. I inquire to if he has seen or had reason to believe that something of supernatural significance is afoot. And he said, and I quote, ha ha ha, nah. End quote. May 14th, 148 a.m. Operation Oakenwood. On a hunch, I punch a mannequin to see what happens. Nothing happens. May 14th, 149 a.m. Operation Oakenwood. I draw my standard issue revolver and point it to the head of a mannequin, yelling that I need answers. These situations should be delicate. You are either antagonizing supernatural forces or looking very stupid. Approximately 25 seconds later, all lights go out. I am trained in seven martial arts. It is now that I prepare for attack. Lights come back on approximately 10 seconds later. There was a new note on the floor at my feet. A female mannequin wearing pink summer fashions for active women on the go points down at hastily scrawled handwritten note. It reads as such, duly, no other word was found on page. May 14th. 1.55 a.m. Operation Oakenwood. I find my way back to security officer Stanley Dupley and ask him if the name Dooley means anything to him. He says, and I quote, Yeah, I know that motherfucker. He is a real creepy type. The kind of dude that goes to women's lingerie and sniffs underwear. End quote. May 14th, 2 a.m. Operation Oakenwood. I make call to Director Zimbabwe Klein. I record our conversation for training purposes. Hello, Director Klein. There is a supernatural incursion at local department store, Wheatley's. Animated mannequin, sir. Please advise. Uh huh. Uh huh. No, they do not seem to be an outward threat as of yet. Okay. Thank you, sir. May 14th, 2.33 a.m., Operation Oakenwood. I find and survey the house of one Mr. Dooley Tibbles. Modest home in suburban area. Lawn neatly cut. No dogs are barking. May 14th, 3 a.m., Operation Oakenwood. I sneak onto the property unannounced and unlawfully. 
I hear the faint sound of human misery. I smell the faint smell of bleach and hydrochloric acid around the basement door. I felt it was probable cause enough for violent entry into the domicile. I kick in the back door. I found one Mr. Dooley Tibbles in a state of undress, dancing with a mannequin in lingerie to a track by Master Songsmith, Prince cold when the doves cry. Mr. Tibble proceeds to violently assault me with a filleting knife he had at arm's reach on a workbench. The mannequin watches passively. I proceed to subdue assailant with a swift kick to the testicles. Mr. Tibbles doubles over. I police the knife, Mr. Tibble says, and I quote, you kicked me in the dick, man, end quote. May 14, 307 AM, Operation Oakenwood. I proceed to search the basement of Mr. Tibble's house. I found Mitch matched body parts. Before I could confirm the identity of said victims, the lights went out. I feel the bite of a blade enter my right oblique. I use a maneuver made popular in the martial arts Krav Maga and disarm the knife. I then proceed to hip toss the assailant on a hunch from my tactile stimulus. I retrieve my pocket light and shine it on my attacker. There is a female mannequin in lingerie staring at me lifelessly. The house lights come back on. May 14th, 3.15 a.m. Operation Oakenwood. I zip tie Mr. Dooley Tibble's hands and secure mannequin of unknown origin in my trunk. I then proceed to call the local authorities. May 14th, 317 AM Operation Oakenwood. I cannot confirm the identities of the lifeless women, but it appears as if Mr. Tibbles was attempting to sew together a woman cobbled out of parts of several different women. No sign of bureau agents. I assume they may have been dissolved in hydrochloric acid. I also find a kidnapped woman bound and gagged tied to a water pipe. May 14th, 319 AM Operation Oakenwood. Police arrive. I give a vague description of the agency as per our training and leave Mr. Dooley Tibbles to face local state justice. May 14th, 4.40 a.m. Operation Oakenwood. Unidentified mannequin is brought to the Bureau's Annex Department for further questioning. Case closed.